Hey everyone, I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica, and we are the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. And today we are gonna talk about our Summer Sensory Guide, and we're gonna give you our top five summer sensory activities for you to do with your children this summer. I know you do. <laughs> Summer is here, especially in Boise where we are shooting right now. Summer is here and it is so important to offer a variety of sensory based activities for your children in the summer months. Now there are a variety of reasons why, but the biggest one is the routine is different, school is generally out, and weather is wild, and so are the kids. <laughs> so we want to incorporate these sensory-based activities into their daily routine in order to help them feel organized and to help them have some sort of a routine and some sort of expected activities to help regulate their bodies and their brains. We all have a sensory system, so we all need to be participating in sensory activities, but like Rachel said, these kiddos don't have their regular routine like they do during school, so let's give them a variety of sensory activities to complete. And that is why we created our Digital Summer Sensory Guide. It's full of a variety of sensory activities to meet different sensory needs, but also that incorporate all eight sensory systems. What else we wanted to make sure to include was information. So we're sharing a lot about what sensory processing looks like, as well as the activities, handouts. It's just a one-stop shop, a one big bundle full of summer sensory goodness for you to take with you when you are traveling or to send to grandma's house with the kids or to even maybe send to daycare or school if your child is going to a program in the summer as well. We also provide several different strategy handouts for traveling. We do a lot of sensory diets in this guide because sensory diets are the perfect strategy to use in the summertime. We also talk about interoception, which is a very, very important topic. Yep. Another thing that we wanted to make sure to include were templates. So we recommend laminating these templates so you can reuse them, but things like a visual schedule template and a sensory diet template. So that way you can use these consistently throughout the summer to help your child know what's expected, what sensory activities they can participate in, and you can really help them learn how to thrive in different conditions. So if you're ready to check out the Summer Sensory Guide, it's linked below in the description. You can check that out and purchase it when you're ready. In the meantime, we wanna give you our five favorite summer activities. These activities are in the Summer Sensory Guide, plus more of course, but here they are. The first one is a balloon towel toss. This is one we've been doing for years with our therapy clients, and it's really simple. You just grab a towel and a water balloon, and you have a person on each side holding two ends of the towel. So you need a partner. Yep, yep. and you are throwing the balloon up and catching it just up and down like a magic carpet. Now, if you wanna make it a little bit more complicated, grab two more friends and try to toss the balloon to your friend's towel on the other side. And this takes a lot of communication, a lot of coordination, a lot of those underlying skills we love to work on, but it's also really fun because you're using a water balloon and what kid doesn't love a water balloon? It's so great for cause and effect because if you don't use the appropriate amount of force to toss the balloon, or if you don't communicate with your partner to hurry, run, 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 we have to go catch it, and to go catch the balloon, that balloon's gonna pop and be broken and water's gonna be everywhere. So it's great for that cause and effect and to reflect and review and adjust what you're doing to get a little bit better each time. The next one is with a kiddie pool. So this is just your small little pool that you can fit on the back porch and you're gonna fill it up with water and you're gonna put a whole bunch of small objects into the pool. This is of course done with supervision, especially if you have very young children who like to mouth objects, but things like marbles and coins or small Lego pieces are perfect for this. And you're gonna have your child get into the pool or right on the edge and the outside of the pool and they're gonna stick their foot in and use their toes to pick up the objects. 
<laughs> Those monkey toes, we love them. <laughs> this is a great sensory activity to incorporate with water. So if your child struggles to complete water-based activities, this is like a, just dipping their toes into the water to get them started and get a little more comfortable. It's great for visual perception as well, especially if you have a variety of objects. You can ask them to get certain objects and they're gonna use their visual perception to find it, locate it, and then go pick it up. This activity is also really helpful for toe walkers. So if your child walks up on their toes, this is a good one with the curling of their toes and strengthening of those arches in the feet to really help facilitate a more typical foot walking pattern. It's, we're not gonna say it's going to cure the toe walking, but it's definitely a strategy that we would use in the clinic to help a child learn how to have that more appropriate walking pattern if toe walking was something they struggled with. The next activity is a garden hose obstacle course. Now this sounds really basic and honestly it is. You are just going to take a garden hose and set up different activities with it. So the first things that come to mind for me are setting it up on the ground and having the child hop over it. So doing a variety of hopping patterns, hopping side to side, forwards and backwards. This is a very important developmental skill from the time a child is two to three up until their 83, you never know. <laughs> so keeping it really simple, really straightforward, letting your child be as creative as possible with the garden hose and setting up these activities. The other one I was thinking of was use the garden hose as a balance beam. It's Ooh. a great one to practice that balance and postural control, or even with a bear walk. So sideways bear walks can be really fun where your child is on their hands and their feet and the garden hose is like, between their hands and their feet as they do their sideways bear walk. Maybe even have them try to set it up as an infinity loop and then walk on the infinity loop, crawl around the infinity loop, hop around the infinity loop. See if they can just set it up as an infinity loop and give them a visual to copy. Dang, we could keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. So okay. the next one is a balloon shaving cream activity. This is obviously for outdoors, so you don't have to worry about the mess, but blow up a balloon, tie it off, cover it in shaving cream, and then grab maybe a pencil and pop it and see what happens. Make sure you take a slow motion video of this. We love using this with our kiddos who are maybe a little bit more sensitive to auditory input. A lot of kids have that anxiety around the balloons popping and so when we add the shaving cream it definitely dulls the sound and it makes it a lot more manageable so they'll see and hear that it isn't as bad and it will help build that tolerance of being able to process and modulate those louder noises. This is also super fun to do with kiddos who are a little bit more tactilely defensive. You can help them get that shaving cream all over the balloon and then quickly wash their hands with the shaving cream and work on that tactile modulation. All right, the last activity we're gonna share with you today is an outdoor sensory scavenger hunt. So we love to incorporate scavenger hunts, not only for the visual sensory system because you're looking for certain items within competing backgrounds, but when you add a sensory scavenger hunt, we're definitely looking for things that smell a certain way, things that feel a certain way, that weigh a certain amount in our hands, uh, things that we can taste, that are safe to taste. So incorporating as many senses as you can by having the child search and seek out these different items within their outdoor environment. We do have a downloadable summer scavenger hunt in our summer sensory guide. So if that's one that's interesting to you, it is in there. But this is great for nature walks, for hiking, when you're traveling. That's a really good one. We also wanted to provide y'all with a freebie today for hanging out with us. Now we make sensory calendars and we love sensory calendars because it's a really simple way of just holding you accountable for implementing a sensory activity every day. They're super simple, very basic and straightforward, but we are going to give you a free download for our June sensory calendar and it will be linked in the description below. And we also have July and August for all the summer months. So once you purchase the Summer Sensory Guide, you will get access to all of those calendars, which are so fun. All right, so I think that might be all of them. It. That was our five activities. And if you're interested in purchasing the guide, it's in the link below. <laughs>